Well, Foster, I want to talk to you about the Georgia LSU game. Obviously, that was a great game for LSU. Can you kind of, you know, take me through what the mindset was for the Tigers going into that game that afternoon against Georgia? Uh, you know, we uh, we had just come off a, a hard-fought loss at Florida, you know, and uh, we had a bad taste in our mouths. Um, and honestly, we, we really just had a great week of practice, and we had a really good game plan going in. Um, we felt that we kind of we kind of had a good idea of what of what the Georgia defense was going to throw at us, um, personnel and scheme wise. Um, and when it came down to it, we just made the big plays when we had to. I mean, the the third and ones, the fourth and ones. I mean, we had a high third down conversion rate, and I mean, we should have been a lot better in the red zone, scoring points wise, scoring touchdowns. Um, but we came through when we needed to make big plays. Cole made big kicks, and the defense played their butts off. As far as that LSU environment, so much is made of the night games, but as far as day games go, have you heard a louder crowd than you heard that day? Oh, yeah, the crowd was exceptional. Um, I mean, going taking the bus from the team hotel to the stadium was, was even an experience in itself, you know. Guys were kind of hitting the side of the bus, you know, man, and it's got a, it, it gave us energy in it. And those guys cheering us on was 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 humongous. Was was so big. Crowd noise at LSU is is a huge bonus that that we're able to that we're able to have. And and those guys coming out for that 2:30 kickoff was was exceptional. You mentioned the short yardage plays. There were some fourth and ones, some third and ones. How did the Georgia defensive front measure up against teams that you played? And what was the key to those conversions for LSU? Um, you know, it was uh, you know we we went fast. We, we went fast and we kind of kept their cleats out the ground and, and we tried to set up and we tried to make sure that, that we were ready before they could. Um, you know, and eventually they got used to that. So at the end of the day, I think we were four for four on fourth down conversions. Um, end of the day, we just had to, we had to be a football player. You know, I mean, you could scheme it up as, as best as you can and, and I mean, you could have the right guys on the field, but at the end of the day, you got to block the dude in front of you, and the running back's got to make a play. Joe's got to make a play, especially on those. I think we had three quarterback sneaks that we converted. Uh, it, it was just huge, you know, guys doing their jobs, being in the right place. I want to put you on the spot with a, sort of a controversial question about the college football playoff, the way they say it's supposed to be the four best, maybe not the four most deserving. Where did you sit with it this year after watching the SEC championship game? Did you think Georgia was one of the four best? And how would you determine it? Do you think a team should have to win their conference championship game to get in? That's a loaded question. You know, um, and there's a lot of good points you made in that question. Um, it, it See, there's there's a lot of discrepancy there, you know, and th that's why there's so many votes. You know, that's why it's not determined by a single voter because everyone's going to have a different opinion. Um, so, I mean, I couldn't imagine you you losing a game and getting into the playoff and being rewarded in that sense, um, even though how well you guys played and how well you guys knew knew how to play against Alabama, um, something we didn't. Uh, which, I mean, that's it's just the truth. Um, uh, yeah, I, I I couldn't see you guys going over anyone at that point. Um, some games ended how they ended, you know. But um, at at the end of the day, I think it ended the right way. Appreciate it, Foster. Good luck here in Mobile. Thank you very much.